The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 4th of April. My pleasure to be here and we're looking at the Dow down, only down 18 at 34,798. I think in the very shorter term, the Dow is just digesting the very big gain it had essentially from the very last, uh, not the 32.272 low of February the 24th, but the uh, the, the low that was around about the March the 7th of 32,578, that's where this extension started to come up. And we hit 35,372. And now I think it's going to be good. But now we've got some new leadership, at least at the beginning of the week. And that leadership we'll talk about in a moment. Well, let's go to the, um, the, the parameters we're looking at. Within the Dow, if the 30... I would said to subscribers to my opening call, 34,950 or maybe 970 to 35,050 or maybe 70. That area is where there should be a lot of resistance. We've seen it before. We saw it when we stopped there uh, on that big spike up over 35,000 to 3, 35,372. Uh, 35, that really big sell-off on Thursday Assassinated uh, by many fund managers saying, "Hey, this has been good. I've just got, I've got to take some. Pro I've just got to get out of something," and they just increase the selling pressure right into the close. So Friday's action was just kind of okay for the Dow. Today's action is just okay. Um, what we're really seeing is that the S and P is now. So the Dow used to be leading now, and then the S and P, and then the uh, NDX 100. And then the IWM, the Russell 2000. And now what we're seeing is the S&P, the Dow is a little bit weaker. S&P is a little stronger, up 14 and a half at 45.60. It needs to get to the 45.95, 46.03 level sometime this week without breaking down below 4,500. Let's see if we can do that. Then comes the QQQ. Well, look at the QQQ today. The index 100 is up sharply. It's up 1.2%, up 4.37 at 366.21. This is the area that I've said to subscribers. We're going to focus on this area for now. Uh, we've got a lot of commodity area type uh, um, sectors. Let's see what, what can happen in this particular phase because there has to be a catch up. And I didn't want to be... Uh, beholden to a particular stock. There's some stocks in the index 100 that have just been absolutely decimated on the way down and we're ready for it. not just a good bounce, but at least uh, the chance of an intermediate term move to the upside. Maybe it's just percentage terms. Maybe it is um, in time. Maybe it's a combination. But I mean, let's just go to Square. I mean, Square is up today at 8 at 141, uh, up 6%. And that went from 289 in August of last year <clears throat> to 82.72, the low of about the 23rd, 24th of March, uh, February. Uh, so this peak D with the left side, right side price time match is really good. I just didn't want subscribers to be beholden to any any particular stock that looks like it's doing great, and then suddenly another shoe drops. I'd rather have the composite, in other words, the index 100 to go to the upside and yes you give up some of the gains because you're not getting individual stocks can really fly but i'd rather take that chance and be have the, a little bit let's see what docusign's doing docusign uh struggling yes it's peak a peak b peak c oh i thought i finished that let me just do this right here for those of you who are new to my work identify the lowest low bar um Count each successively higher peak. It's gone from DocuSign DOCU, gone from 314 Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal at the top back in August of 2021. And what does it do? It has a little bit of a pullback. It comes down to where? It comes down to 71 round number low. It's trading now at 111, 40 points. I mean, that's almost 60% gain. 
but a 60% gain after a whopper of a loss. But even here, you don't know what the next year, you know, could, could there be another? I don't, I don't think there's going to be the kind of selling spree we've had, but certainly you could pull back and then stall. So having the composite, I think, is making, a, for at least, it gives a little bit of a sense of comfort because you're not, as I say, beholden to one or two stocks. So uh, the IWM, the Russell 2000, uh, weak down 72 at 206. We've been watching this to see whether the, very often as the year ends and the beginning of the new year starts, you will get a huge rally in the small caps, the Russell 2000, or even the 3000, the iShares Russell 2000, the IWM ETF. And uh, it's done very nicely to get to PT, stalled right at what? The 200 period exponential moving average right there, 211.48. And uh, we're down at 206. A lot of work needs to be done. I think it's going to be time. Maybe the price is kind of not as much price to the downside from here, but maybe it's time. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties. Gold. Gold is up nine at 1932. There's a pattern that I talk about a lot. Uh, it is this pattern right here. If I can find it, where did it go? Uh, no, must be there. Has to be there. Uh, let's find it. Uh, yep, there it is. So I only look at basically three directional moves. One is straight up and straight down. Here it is, number one. The other is a cup formation. It could be a V-shaped formation. Basically, you're going from one point down and then back again. How does it deal with the left side high? Or it's the left side low when it's an arch formation. Green when it's up, going up, and it can take out that left side high. That's uh, the reverse Y pattern, which is really positive if you break out significantly. And on the downside, the dreaded H, lowercase h. But that lowercase h, if it holds the left side low, even if it goes under it but closes above it, it can meander and go sideways in a kind of a rectangle formation and make a second arch, what I call, I call the lowercase m. So here you are. You've got Eiffel Tower straight up. That's the A, a pattern right there. I'll just make it a little brighter so that you can see. A pattern looks like the Eiffel Tower. Then it finds a base and then it tries to run and it goes to a peak B and it fails. A and a B pulls back, breaks to a new low, and then it tries again. He has another A. This is a for this particular little uh, a, a, um, diagram. I'm calling this an A again, a gray A. All right. So yeah, gold is acting well, fabulously, in fact, considering what it did going from under 1700 to uh, 2070s, but now it's stalling because most of that, most of the fear factor where gold becomes the icon of fear is kind of subsiding just a little bit, but it's still elevated. And that's exactly, look, I'm talking about human nature, and you can see this is the price point of human nature in gold, and it says, I'm still watching gold real closely, but right now it's just, it's just in a holding pattern. Silver, same thing. Not quite as uh, the pattern is not quite as good as the as the gold. It looks like it wants to retest the 2427 level of the 200 period moving average at 2448. Down a little bit, more like an arch, the dreaded H pattern, um, and it's been below the left side low a couple of times. We're looking at uh, crude oil. Crude oil is up 3.94, 103.23. Good action, but in in a range. I'll be right back. How's that? Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC. Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, we're back. <clears throat> a couple of things I want to just look at here because a number of people have asked, what are you going to be doing in your webinar? Well, the question is, can there be higher indices in 2022? Can there be record highs? And uh, I'll be discussing that in great detail. I'll be discussing uh, the selectivity that we're looking at, uh, what it would take, what is going on as far as I'm concerned, just in the uh, <clears throat> in the way I like to look at markets and uh, which sectors are working well, which sectors could come under pressure. Uh, they had a statement in the den. Uh, folks, try out the den. It is really a, a terrific medium. Uh, what we're looking at here is I just did the, um, this is a continuous contract of the, you wouldn't be trading this, but this is what I'm using right now, um, of the NDX 100. And you can see that the one minute chart made a peak E. This is that right. I always like to do this. It's really a good way to assess. <coughs> and I'll be talking about these techniques when I do the webinar. Look, see this high that was made here at peak D in, in the Chapman wave? In the Chapman wave, we're always looking for at least four higher peaks. This is the second peak D in a row. Usually you don't get third, so you've got to be careful on the uh, second one. And look, the MACD and Stochastic are starting to pull back. Look at the difference here when it made a slightly higher high at 15,068 at about just after about 10, 10, 12, let's say. And now it's pulling back. It's not breaking down. It's just pulling back in the one-minute chart. Two-minute chart made a peak E. And this basically looks like um, like a rogue wave in that it made a high and looked like it was pulling back. And then suddenly there were just these couple of bars that went pop to the upside and then failed and you were back to the down mode. And that's just the one-minute chart. But it's still only a leg B, a peak, sorry, a peak C in the a uh, five-minute chart. So think of it as like a like a daily, a weekly, and a monthly. Uh, so we're in C in the five-minute chart and only a B in the 10-minute uh, chart. So it could uh, digest gains and maybe start up again. This is the NQ. Okay, now let's get back to our story. What we're looking at is uh, crude oil has held very well. <clears throat> After these huge spikes to the upside starting about the 21st of Feb, got the whoppers, and then finally it goes to a high on the 7th of March. 
That price could change because it's a continuous contract. Get smoothed out. Yep, there it is. Now the high is 129.17. This has changed the price. Nothing changes except the price because it gets smoothed out. 129.15. All right. On the 7th, comes down to about 91, 92, and then rallies right sharply to the 117 ish area, comes back down, holds the 50 period moving average. Remember, you don't need these moving averages until you need them. We need them right now. We needed them the last two days because they touched it twice. And it's now moving up a little bit. The MACD is weak. Stochastic is very weak. On balance is, is weakening. And the 9 has just crossed under the 14. So the big question here is, wait a minute. With everything that's going on, with the talk about uh, using up some of our reserves, what, a million a day or something like that, uh, we're going to be adding uh, we're looking at least for the for the shorter term amelioration of the tension in crude oil. Well, if you look at crude oil weekly chart going from 60 uh, some months back to the high of 120, it's called 130 just uh, in March. <clears throat> that is a huge move. You can see a consolidation, but until there is a move back under 87, 85, somewhere around there, this still remains elevated. And you've raised the base of support. That's the way I like to look at it. However, based on the candle, this long wick in the monthly candle for crude oil, spiraling up to that high of about 130 in, in March, and then pulling back and closing with like a, like a hammer, inverted hammer candle, moving up is, is going to be important. I give it the whole of April to say, on any two days, I would say a week, but a week could be, I'm talking about a week, but you could get that in happening in the daily charts. I'm not going to go to the week. I'm going to say, if any two days out of three, it doesn't have to be consecutive. You could do it once and then stop, and then the next day, it does it again. If there is a close above the halfway marker in this candle right here, it's called 112. We're at 102. You could do that in a second, but if that... Let me just say that again. 112. I'm going to the wick. Yeah, let's call it 113. If there are two closes within three days above 113 in crude oil, it means oil is still in play. I think it's going to be in play. I'm talking about the shorter to more kind of a little bit intermediate term. I'm talking about weeks, in other words. That's going to say be careful because stocks like Exxon came out with earnings, I believe, today. Um, it's down 42 cents and 82.70. All of them have had that big spike to around about the 7th of March and pulled back. If you look at Chevron, CVX, same thing. It's more like, it looks more like the crude oil, actually looks more like the gold chart. So CVX is one of the better ones in the multinational oil companies. So if you're looking for a play in these, you either have to scale in, and the came the question over the weekend, what do we do about these uh, multinational oils? As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to do it just purely on chart formation and history. I'm not going to say geopolitically there should be a huge uh, further gain in oil. We just don't know because we don't know who's going to produce a little bit more, who's not. It's kind of complicated. And the pattern says it was easy now it's complicated because it's sideways. In a rectangle formation, my rule of thumb, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience unless it's a wide um, rectangle that is not the narrow long one, but a wide one. This kind of fits a combination, and it's already made the arch formation rather than the stair step move to higher highs to a C. It stopped at B underneath the previous high. All I can say is Chevron, is stuck in a range, but this is one of the better companies. If if you're looking, if you're if you're in leg D already in the monthly chart, that's the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology. So um, it's achieved everything you want. And the E peak E with four bars of consolidation so far in the weekly says the upside could be limited because it could just be momentary hysteria because all of a sudden everybody gets nervous because of whatever's happening. But if you look at the pattern, it says there's been a decisive weakening in the technicals. Yes, it did fill in the gap. This is Chevron and one of the leading multinational oil companies. And therefore, there's a better chance it's going to retest the area of 155 
which was 155.26, was the low on the 15th. And if it, at 163, if it closes under 160 any time this week, there's a chance it'll start to arch over. And that's where I would start to want to start a three-position entry point if you're interested in Chevron. And in the you'd have to you'd have to think that it maybe is a successful test in the beginning. So 153 is the level we're looking at. I'd say 157. If you haven't got any, you could even nibble here. But that's just a nibble. That's different altogether to planning a move that says Chevron later in the year should go higher. So if you're thinking that way, then I'd wait in the 157. I would it's only five points down. I would start the position, but I prefer. Um, that I got that position and then it really strongly because if it starts to break and go to the next level that I'd be looking at, which is at 151, if it takes that out, it actually could go quite a bit lower. So I would say I don't start a smaller position a little bit lower down, the four points, maybe five points, and then you have to test how much spread is that. I'll be back down, down 13 as it up for Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we've got leg, leg C in the E-mini. Uh, he has a five-minute chart using the Chapman Wave automated uh, support and resistance lines. 
And what we're looking at is right there, 4561 will be the next area of resistance. And I had spoken about the NQ continuous contract. I had questions about that. You see the five minute chart is 15,059 resistance and then 15,068. That was peak C in the five minute chart over a period of another, what are we doing? Yeah, by the end of the end of the show, we'll see if we've actually been able to make that leg D, but that'll only be a leg C in the in the 10 minute. Remember, what I'm gonna be teaching my, my webinar coming up on a week from Wednesday, uh, April the 13th for subscribers to my opening call is how do you use how we how have we so successfully used the smaller time frame that gets to a, say a peak D what is the next time frame if you're in the daily where's the weekly is the weekly now building strength is it saying hey I'm only in B I can still go to a C or I'm A I can go to a B and that's really important that's how you can stay in positions uh, much much longer but it also allows you to get out of positions when you um, start to weaken now let's go back to um, so I, I'm done with that with the whole Chevron thing a couple of questions came in could I look at UNG let's look at UNG UNG is trading it just had an alternate count so it's peak A, peak B, peak F slash C. This is leg D. Uh, it's gone above the rectangle formation. Remember my rule of thumb in the rectangle formation? If it starts to make a lopsided gravy cup pattern, you can get a left side. Oh, I had this written in, but it was probably in the, uh, in the contract itself. This is the way I would have been looking at this to see a left side, right side price time match. Let's see if we can get that here. That's red. And this goes green. And I'm using not the fulcrum from the bottom, the, the plumb line, because that's way off. That's that's the gravy cup, lopsided cup formation. So this is where I'm going from this leg D right here. And that takes you to, it takes you to um, the 1st of April to break the, the high of UNG, which is United States Natural Gas Fund, the high of the 2nd of February, 19.50. Well, we did that a day before, and now we've gone a little bit higher. What's the rule of thumb in this uh, in this huge rectangle formation? Uh, you remember, actually, I had already drawn this in. Let me just make this darker so you can see. Well, let me make it green like I usually do. This is called the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Resistance Line. And that said, it extends a little bit further. It says that, yeah, by Friday, you should be taking out that left side high of the 2nd of uh, Feb, and that's exactly what it did. And you got the MACD strong, stochastics flat at 88%, nines way over the 14 period moving average, but the, the wide rectangle formation, if it makes a lopsided cup and starts to make higher highs with a stair-step move, constantly treating some areas key support, look at this 14 period moving average, broke it, uh, cl closed under it twice, but closed above it all that other time, um, that says, it should take you to just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then be careful because you could pull back into about a third or maybe even a half of the previous rectangle formation. So we're going to be watching this, but the left side, right side price time match of the weekly chart of UNG with a high of the 8th of October at 2210. Um, let me draw that now. Uh, let me just do Oh, I already drew that in. I drew the, uh, this is a chapter wave inside. I'll also teach you how to draw these inside wedge target resistance lines on the on the way down. They are target support lines and styles, usually dash green on the way up. And that says, I don't even have to look at the bottom. I'm just going to the top and I'm saying from this level on the left to that high and to this place on the right, right there, well, what, what have we got? We've got the week of, you got the week of the 22nd of April to get to the high of 22.10. And we're at 20.20. .20. That's a whole two points. That's, that's a big move. But anyway, that's what it's looking like right now. And I can now make an adjustment. Oh. Yeah, to that. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll see what happens. Meantime, back at the launch, key support in the 1910 to 1875 area. A question came up. Where did it go? Oh, thank you for that statement. That was, uh, yeah, question about the comp. Oh, Amazon, a rectangle formation. You know, I did this, when GT, when you sent this over the weekend. 
Um, I I don't see the rectangle quite maybe the way you do it, but I'd like to do this. Amazon's trading up even after the vote to unionize what is it one of their one of their facilities oh i see what you mean you mean this kind of rectangle here yeah I, I i agree with you in that regard but there's a rule of thumb that i have another rule of thumb, a lot of thumbs that says within this context when you get a dreaded h pattern that gives you a buy signal to buy mode which basically the macd and stochastic did there's a good chance that the arch formation then becomes, it morphs from a negative to a very positive level of uh, upside action, and that takes you to like this. So Amazon trading at 33.25, up 54 right now. It did get very close to the left side high that I would have, I would have treated as resistance at 34.58. Uh, we went to 34.20. Uh, 3416.63 on the 29th of March in the daily chart. We've pulled back. It is a peak C. The, uh, the, the stochastic went back under 80%. I don't usually like that. But I, I don't like it if it's very quick like here. Yeah, we're into a peak D. And remember, I spoke about this in the Chapman methodology. If you've had a very sharp pullback and whatever you're following, if there is just a, a very quick peak A to a B to a C and a D, and when you look at the bigger picture, it is just a really, it's kind of a pathetic rally. Be careful because you could pull back and retest the low. You don't have to break it significantly because once it's gone to a D, it's used up a lot of negative and positive energy. It's more just the arch formation. Well, lo and behold, we went from the low of, in, in Amazon, you went from the low of the 24th of Jan, 2707.04. <clears throat> All the way to peak D, just under the two orange 200 period moving average, right there, uh, on the 9th of Feb at 3276.69. And what did we do? We went down just below that low of the uh, 24th, I think it was, and that went to 2671.41. So this is this is a brand new buy mode. We're in in place here. There should be. Some way it should squeak. I don't think it's going to be a breakout yet, but I think it'll squeak to the 3417 or higher area, and that'll be leg D. Okay, if you look at the monthly chart, uh, there's a pattern that you can read books and books about this expanding wedge formation. I couldn't even tell you how many expanding wedge formations were spoken about, spoken about, spoken about in this huge negative way. And then over a period of many, many bars, it just disappears as something to consider. And this is typical. Look what happened. It makes this pattern a lower lows, lower lows, higher highs, higher highs. And then what does it do? It has this magnificent rally from under 2,700 to, uh, the, to uh, almost 3,400. So it's almost negated this pattern. So remember, this, like, it's like a head and shoulders. By the time you recognize the head and shoulders, it's too late. Use other patterns to confirm and get in earlier for that pattern. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 10. S&P's up 19. Let's see where the QQQ is, because that's the one we favor right now. Whoa, big move. Almost up five. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. So let me just get to some of the questions here. I'll just go in order that I can see. CLF, uh, one that we've liked a lot. We don't actually own it right now. CLF is Cleveland Cliffs Inc. Federal Steel Iron Ore Pellets. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a leg D in the monthly chart, a peak C already in the weekly chart. In the rectangle formation, broke above it after being in that 26th area uh, to the 20 to the 19s for a long time. For since last, um, oh, you can go back even to, to summer of last year. And it finally breaks to the upside, like a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, holding really well. Because my fear always with these patterns of the rectangle is it can break above. And then very often, like the IWM, it goes zoop right back in again to the rectangle. So this goes Cleveland Cliffs. I like it. The big question is um, to add, to add or not to add. You know, it's to be or not to be, but to add or not to add. If you've already got your position, I think because of the rotation that I'm looking at right now, it's holding well. I suspect even if it goes to from 32.04, CLF is the symbol down 33 cents today. Even if it can get to the 34s, I think it's coming back to do a whole bunch of testing in the 30, uh, 32 and a half to 30 area. So if that's the case, I'm just going to say hold off. Now, I think another question someone else asked is, do I take some profits in CLF? And I'm going to say, if you've had really good profits, money management suggests, yes, take a little bit off just to make yourself comfortable. That's all. Not to say, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a leg C, a peak C in the weekly chart. It should still try to get to a D. I look at this as a MACD strong, 95% in the weekly. You've got a Chapman Wave squash formation. That's where the MACD just... So rockets to the upside with the stochastic, with the price, and that says very quick peak A to B to C, and then you might take a little time before you get to D. So I'm just saying for money management, if you're just a little uncomfortable, take something off. If you're looking to add to it, because I think steel uh, is is the big clue. Is this a late cyclical? So that the steels look like they're doing really well, but it's almost the end of the run. They do that very often historically. I'm, I'm doing my assessment here. If you look at SLX, which is the steel Van Eck Vectors ETF, what I've spoken every webinar I ever talk about, I've had the steel that we've spoken about. It has gone to that leg C in the monthly chart and a peak C in the, in the it looks almost the same. And it looks like like Cleveland Cliffs are holding in the pattern right here. I, do, you, do you add, or if you're not in at all, do you buy? I think that you just, if you haven't been in for the big move up, why not just hold off? Because everything that's going to go up from here, I think, will come back and digest gains in the steel area. Newmont Mining is a Newmont and Newcore, that is. 
Um, what I'm going to say is, why don't you have patients, if you aren't in it, you're waiting to buy, rather uh, use, and that was the Cleveland Cliffs CLF, I would just wait. Prefer it's a big deal. So you, you, you start a position uh, 10% lower. Um, that, that, is, that is a big deal. But if, if you haven't got anything, you don't have to wait for uh, 29 to get in. As it's pulling back here, let's look at it together. But it, it needs to test the 14 period moving average of 30.47. And if it closes under it, I suspect that steel stocks are going to have a, a slightly longer timeout, uh, but still holding very well, almost like the oil, like the XLE. Another question came in XLE. Well, it's almost the same pattern. You've had your big rectangle formation. You started to move towards a Chapman Wave stair step, move to go just on, just under or just above the previous high in the XLE, which was uh, March, I think, the 7th. Was it March the 7th? Yeah, March the 8th at 80.22. I may as well put that in because I'm always going to be talking about it. 80.22 on 3822. And I'm going to make that red because it's still in um, a consolidation phase in the daily. It's a weekly peak D. This can go on for a little bit. So all I'm saying is I would I would treat them all together. They're holding extremely well, which means that over the period of months, we've got to look at these as potentially going higher, the whole energy sector. But on a short-term position, if you haven't got anything, where do you get in? That's what we'll be looking at in subscribers as well. We'll be looking at uh, getting back into some of the oils that we hadn't got into before. Next question is VST. VST is um, Vista Core, uh, Vistra Core, electric power business. Now, I didn't have a chance. I did this last week. I just finished some of it right now. But I did the notation. Haven't done the weekly. <clears throat> it's trading at 23.36 down nine cents. It's making higher highs and higher lows within a rectangle formation. I, I think for a dividend stock, I like this. Would I get it now when it's just about to start bumping into resistance? Let me have a look at my Chapman Wave automated uh, resistance levels. Vista, Vistra, I keep saying Vista. Vistra, uh, 2406 is next in the weekly, and it's at 2338. Then nothing in the weekly. 2356, 2364 in the 120-minute chart. And you can see I have no support levels. So previous resistance becomes support. I like it. And if you treat it as a dividend stock, figure out the dividend and then proportion to get into your risk. And you could, I would start my position here in VST uh, for, the, for the questioner. Um, and on this one, I would have just because it has a dividend, just for the moment, let's give it a one-point stop. 22.38 will be the stop. Um, I think 22.38. Yes, 22.38. And uh, let's follow this one again a little later in the week. Um, not the big position, but just like a starter position. Okay, a small starter position. Let's go back to uh, other question, Mars. That's Mosaic. Mosaic is the mosaic company potash phosphates fertilizers this is a little different in the sense that the area of potash and fertilizers i think that demand is going to be there for quite a while but it might only last part of maybe this, this summer i don't know i, I need to figure out when uh, all of these really come to fruition. I suspect if it's fertilizers, you have to use up the summer. So I like this very much. I also say it's in a digestive phase. It goes into the same category, but it's a little, the sector itself is different. So in this particular instance, <clears throat> I would think of it, it's a, the question was do I take profits? So the question is. Oh, I can't find that right now, but I believe it was, uh, do I start taking some profits? And I'm going to suggest yes. Why? Because you've been this in a long, for a long time. It's had a fabulous move. It's now digesting gains just for comfort and money management at 66.43. I take a little bit off. Would I get back in? You know, watch this closely because if it pulls back and it goes and it closes under 64.30, 
then I think you've got yourself the dreaded H formation and just says it could be a test of the uh, 60 or 59 area and you might want to think of adding that back you know, even if it's five points down if it's part of your portfolio and you've had a really good gain and you're actually taking some off for a really nice gain putting back five points later means that you've got a good comfort factor so that's the way i would look at it. a lot of questions oh we've only got one segment to go gosh time flies i will be back to do the tom o'brien show at three o'clock and we can some of the questions you can send to me and i'll do with them now. i want you to look at i'll be back in a moment Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, as we wrap up, the question that came, uh, uh, how on earth did you know that the NQ would go to a leg D in the five-minute chart? Well, number one, 200 period moving average this pink line which you would never need when you're up above it or below it until you're getting close became the most absolute touched it perfectly at about uh, just on nine o'clock and gave a trigger for a peak a and then you saw that the nine crossed over the 14 period and it went to a peak b and c and yet the price was holding using the nine as a walk it just walking the nine period moving average and that was very strong i had what we call a chap wave squash that's the reason why I put the MACD above the stochastic. Look at the stochastic going from what, from the single digits at about nine, just before nine, to nine thirty after nine thirty, hugely positive, over eighty percent, almost ninety percent, ninety something percent. Now it's at eighty one percent, and the rule of thumb with the Chapman wave squash, 
and the MACD and stochastic is that it should take you very quickly to peak A, peak B, peak C. Did not talk about that? I think I might have. And then it pulls back, and then the momentum, that's the torque. That's your first, second, third gear. And then the torque of the higher gears is the momentum from the MACD, and then it finally takes you to a D, and you've got your D. Now what we're looking at is, is there going to be a D in the 10-minute chart? Remember I said, learn how to do the sequences. The daily goes to the weekly, the weekly goes to the monthly. 120 minutes is your trigger point to get in. In this case, I'm using the one minute, two minute, five minute, and 10 minute chart just as an example. I'm not actually trading that. I usually use the E mini um, SP. <clears throat> Look, so there should be a leg D above what? Above the high of 15,074. <clears throat> That's chef wave methodology in a nutshell. A very simple technique when everything's functioning smoothly. When you get your bumpy ride, like it gets to a peak and then pulls back, you've got to be careful. The big issue you noticed today, I didn't even talk about the semiconductors. I'll talk about that tomorrow because I think the big surprise in 2022 will be if we get a glut of chips and those auto companies come back on track again. Ooh, I think they might be better than me. But anyway, we're uh, closing out now. I'll do the news and then I'll be back later for the Tom O'Brien Show.